Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather, The Search for Winter. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from Weatherisk, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. we got a lot to talk about here, Some uh, a little bit of tropical weather here. Uh, then we're going to do a lot of the medium range forecasting, which is showing some really interesting signs for the autumn and the winter, and then some other additional data at the end. So let's get right to it. This here is the website, in case you haven't seen it. Uh, don't forget to get the newsletter down. The only $5 a month gives the next forecast for the next three weeks. Now, the first week is pretty accurate. Second week, so-so. And third week, you know, is just a general model interpretation of what you get. But it get, does give you advance notice. It's all, probably one of the best weather bargains out there for only $3, only $5 a month. So uh, get a chance to sign up for that. All right. This here is a Sam going out to sea. Like we said 10 days ago, not a problem. I know there are private forecasters out there that kept telling you that Sam was a threat. No, it ain't. Uh, that was pretty obvious. And, the re and this here is Victor. Same sort of thing. Nice looking storm coming off the Cape Verdes of Africa. Normally, it could be a serious concern watching it, uh, but it doesn't develop very much and it goes out to sea. Why? This is why. This is the upper air pattern as of yesterday, September 29th. So you see in this image here, look at the lower right. You see that purple area underneath where it says ridge? That's Sam. And it's going out to sea. And you can see the ridge. You see where I have the ridge on the left hand, on the right hand side where it says ridge around the black line. That's the Bermuda High. Now, when the Bermuda High is close to the East Coast, the hurricanes threaten the East Coast much more. But in this case, it's out in the Central Atlantic Ocean. On top of that, we have a big trough on the East Coast, which is why we have spectacular weather on the East Coast today. I mean, the eastern third of the countries look fabulous. But that trough is pretty big. And the interaction between that trough and the Bermuda High being out in the Central Atlantic Ocean means that Sam has to turn out to sea. It was that way today. The model showed that four days ago. It showed it 10 days ago. But not this one was not a hard forecast. Now we also have a big trough on the west coast. You see that, and this big purple area in the Gulf of Alaska, in the upper right, in the upper left corner. You see that big trough coming down. So a couple of them actually, and in between we have this ridge which covers the plains and the Great Lakes, Mississippi Valley, and then a blocking pattern, a, a very strong anomaly, a block, um, in the northern Canada up into the Arctic region. So that's the current upper air pattern. And here's our service map. Look at that high right over the Great Lakes. Uh, really nice weather. The front is down in the Carol South Carolina, Kentucky, out towards uh, Minnesota, Iowa. And then the next front coming into the Pacific Northwest already. This here is our La Nina. There it is. You can clearly see it. It's there. Uh, the blue area running along the coast of the, in, the, in the Pacific. See that big, long blue area off the coast of Peru that extends out south of Hawaii? That's the La Nina. And, you know, it's not super strong, but it's definitely there. This here is the latest, uh, well, this is September 22nd, about a week ago now. The new data should be out. You can see that it has a pool of pretty uh, nice-looking cold water. That's around 3 degrees centigrade. The new data has a couple of pools of 2 degrees centigrade, but the cold water is there. It's about 100 meters down, and it'll be bubbling up to the surface here over the next 30 days, and we have La Nina. Now, the uh, CFS is forecasting a moderate La Nina, unfortunately, but it's full of shit. Uh, you can see that uh, you can see the dashed black line. That is the mean of all these different model runs. So there's about 20 of them and all the different spaghetti lines. They put them together. And then you get your mean. And you can see it gets down to almost uh, a 1.3, 1.4. That's moderate minus 1.4 centigrade. That is moderate La Nina. The problem is that all the other data doesn't show that. Let me show you. These are the other models here from IRI. And you can see that most of them, you look at the uh, the solid green, the purple the blue lines. These are the means of the different models here. And you can see most of them do not show it stays above one degree centigrade, negative one degree centigrade anomaly. That would be a weak La Nina. That's what it shows. Now that's good because weak La Nina, as we talked about in the video last week, <clears throat> is uh, it has a correlation to pretty good snowfall in the central and eastern U.S. as long as it stays weak. Now, and the other, now this here is the upper air pattern as of September 30th. The B stands for blocking patterns. Now, what do I mean by blocking pattern? Normally, in the North Pole in the Arctic region, you have a big Arctic glow there, okay, and that's where all the cold air is 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 uh, built up and trapped. Remember, North Pole cold air, sinking air, you have a low pressure. Um, at the surface and upper levels. Here we have blocking. That is to say, relative to normal, warm air has pushed up into these areas and it's created a bubble, a mountain, in uh, what should be a valley. 
in the uh, in the Arctic region, and we have two of them: one over in northeastern Canada, and Baffin Island, and the other one in central Siberia. Uh, I guess the Siberia and and uh, yeah, uh, Murmansk pushing up towards that way. So. Like the Barren Sea area, and those that's a, this is a, a strong sign of blocking. Now, this is nice to see. Uh, we didn't see this last year or last several years in late September and October. So, the question is, is this going to last? Is this giving us a clue about the winter, or is this just a temporary blip? Well, here we can look at some of our teleconnections. Here's the Atlantic side, the Arctic Oscillation and the NAO, the Greenland blocking feature. And you can see both of these, if you look at the black lines, that's where it has been. And the multicolor lines are the six different models that they're using here. And you can see that most of them keep a negative right through until the middle of October. They bring it towards neutral by the middle of October. But for the next two weeks, it's, it's negative. And the Pacific side, here's the PNA, which is the West Coast Ridge. That allows your cold air to come in from Canada. Now that's negative. Okay, and you can see that it gets turns negative. That means you're not getting original West Coast. But the EPO, the bottom one, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, is currently, if you look at the black line, is positive, but it does drop to negative by the first week of October. And what that does is that it sets up your cross polar flow. Uh, the air coming over from the North Pole in Alaska. So we do have some cross-polar flow coming in, not a lot because the West Coast is negative, but there is some cold air coming in from the Arctic regions into Canada. Now let's take a look at our Siberian snow. It's October, that means it's time to look at Siberian snow. Now why do we do that? Well, because if you get early snowfall in October, it tends to, not always, it tends to support strong blocking patterns and then potentially colder and snowier winters in the central and eastern U.S. Doesn't always work. If you have a strong La Nina, it's going to overwhelm it. If you have a strong uh, uh, Enso, La, El Nino, you, it's, going to overwhelm, it's going to overwhelm it. Okay, but if, if, if the conditions are near neutral, all the other factors being neutral, the snow cover has a bigger impact. And as long as the La Nina stays weak, early snow cover in October in Siberia is something to look at. So this here is the current map. And we can see, uh, as of September 30th, we are already off to a big start. We have a massive trough on an upper low uh, in, in Siberia, dropping a lot of snow right now. And there's another big one in uh, central Russia, uh, out of, uh, I guess that would be uh, covering portions of Kazakhstan uh, that's coming into Siberia. And the key here is the block. Look at the blocking pattern in northwest Russia there. I highlighted very clearly that's keeping the trough active in Siberia, which is producing snow. Now, this is 84 hours out. This is September 3rd. That first system is now up in eastern Siberia, again producing snow up by uh, Kamchatka and places like that in eastern Siberia. And here comes the next one coming out of Kazakhstan, a monster up below, very big system here, going to bring major early season snowfall. Okay, and then here is October 7th. That system continues to move east, spreading a lot of snow, moving very slowly. And the block in central Russia, north central Russia, is very strong, very powerful. And that's keeping Siberia, the jet stream, active, which is producing snowfall. And finally, this is October 8th. Now the block is still there. You see the black line I drew there? This is an omega block. We have a trough in, in Eastern Europe and Ukraine, the big ridge of the pressure, a high pressure, warm air, a bubble of warm air in central Russia, and another trough in Mongolia. That's an omega. It makes it shaped like the omega letter, and that's an omega block. And that's keeping the trough active in Mongolia and Siberia and producing a lot of snow. Look at the early 10-day snowfall in Siberia. I mean, holy crap. That's a lot of snow for the first 10 days in Siberia. That is a lot. And this is the, that was the European, this is the GFS, even better. Now, the difference in the European, notice it's got a gap there north of Mongolia, nothing's falling, but the GFS is more aggressive here, and it's got really impressive snow for the first 10 days of October. I mean, holy crap, that is a lot of snow for Siberia in the first 10 days of October. Does it mean anything? We'll see. Okay, uh, now, let's talk about North America weather here. Uh, this was the uh, uh, map from September 23rd last week, and it was valid for October 4th. This is the European ensemble showing the overall mean pattern. Trough on the East Coast, trough in the Gulf of Alaska, off of British Columbia, and a ridge covering the plains uh, of uh, the United States, South Central Canada, and a block over Greenland. Not a threatening pattern at all. But this is, remember, that's, this, is, this is a summation of the pattern. 
And uh, the, it, it's turning out to be a lot more complicated than what we thought. This is, again, the same sort of thing. This is for October 7th. <clears throat> now, look what's going to actually happen here. This is a much stronger pattern. And this is what happens with the blocking. The blocking forces the energy coming in from the Pacific Ocean to go stay much further to the south. And the models in the extended range often miss it. So it looks like, you know, day 7, day 10, day 12, day 15. Oh, it's going to turn warm. Oh, it's going to do this. It doesn't do that when you have blocking. So this here is the current upper air map, uh, excuse me, for October 1st, tomorrow. There's Sam in the lower right corner. There's the S, Ming Sam. There's our big trough kicking it out to sea. But look at the huge block which has developed over uh, northeastern Canada to Baffin Island and Greenland. Very strong negative NAO here. And here's a big trough in Alaska. So what's happening is the energy, you see the upper low over Arizona in the southwestern states, that's being forced to go underneath the block. And that produces a lot of storminess in the upcoming next week or so. This is now 96 hours. The energy from the trough in the Gulf of Alaska pushes into western Canada. It turns cold to cold stormy there. And it sends a piece of energy into, into Missouri and Illinois. You can see that little L there I drew in there. That's a trough beginning to develop there, low pressure. Meanwhile, the block in Canada has become an omega block in itself. The, a trough there in western Canada, another one in eastern, southeastern Canada, and the big block, you can see the omega letter here, this is an omega block, right over northeastern Canada. We did not see that at all last year, or the year before, or the year before, or the year before. Does it mean anything for the winter? Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting sign. I'll, I'll, let me just say that at this point. Now, this is what happens here. Okay, we have a lot of rain here, uh, low pressure coming into the Great Lakes, uh, southwest winds coming up from the high off the Atlantic coast, so a lot of warm air, warming temperatures here. This is October 3rd into October 4th. The rain moves into the Great Lakes, the Mississippi Valley. Now, this is uh, October 5. An upper low is formed. Over Tennessee, low pressure here, all over the southeastern U.S. coast. We have a strong ridge in the Great Lakes with high pressure there and a block you can see it clearly over Baffin Island and Greenland and another trough on the Pacific North Northwest so the upper low is generating low pressure and uh, with with strong high pressure in Canada and the Great Lakes so if this was a winter storm event this would be a major winter storm here for everybody east of the Mississippi River this is the surface map for October 5 it's just beginning we can see high pressure here in Canada in this area where the arrows are going you can see high pressure here and here very nice Canadian high pressure low pressure in Georgia the rain coming in you have southeast winds bringing in the moisture in from the Bahamas and the southwest Atlantic Ocean and then you're getting your rain and um, this is the GFS that was the European here's the GFS same sort of thing see the high there in the top of the map in Canada 1030 high very nice and then you have the low pressure uh, developing in the Bahamas and the southeast winds bringing the moisture in rain developing in the Carolinas pushing up towards Virginia this is now October 6th Low pressure on the east coast developing. There's the big high here over Montreal, very strong, and you're getting easterly winds bringing the moisture in. So you have steady rain, widespread rain from Philadelphia and Pittsburgh all the way down to Georgia. And again, if this was January and you had a high like this, this would be a major snowstorm in this pattern. Now, this is uh, October 7th. The pattern is still there. The block remains over the Great Lakes. Another one in Greenland. We have a, a dome in the, in the northern Pacific. And look at the upper low there over the southern states. Classic big storm signature if this was the middle of winter. Now, the, this is 192 hours out, a week from uh, tomorrow. Uh, you can see the low pressure is over Hatteras. Classic signature. I mean, think of what this would look like if this was December 8th or January 8th or February 8th. I mean, woof. Can we just get a, a woof for the big snow here? Um, and then high pressure, you can see it in, north of Montreal, bringing the, keeping the cold air in place. In this case, it's cool air. It's not cold air. But, you know, if this was November 8th, a lot of this in the mountains would be snow. i got to tell you. So uh, a lot of easterly winds here bringing in the rain. And there's a lot of rain coming with this system. Now, the models are just picking up on this. I suspect uh, this is going to get a lot wetter over the next couple of days. And this is the European. This is also going to get a lot wetter over the next couple of days. That is, again, October 8th. Now, uh, this, you know, the ensembles are supporting this. That was the operational run. What about the ensembles? They show the same thing. Look at the block here, the big red blob in Hudson's Bay, Canada. That's a blocking pattern. Another one in, over Greenland. Big trough off of the West Coast in the Eastern Pacific. And then you have that low pressure area developing over the Deep South. Classic winter storm signature. I'm telling you, if this was winter, we would be barking like, a, like the big dog. 
Uh, this here is the European 240 hours out, uh, October 10th. The trough gets reinforced. Another one is coming in. So you can see, you see the energy coming in here? So let's go back here, a couple of maps. You see the trough here uh, on, on um, the Pacific Northwest? It sends another piece of energy on the European model into Idaho and Wyoming. And that's going to break off, go underneath the block in Canada, and drop into the southeastern states with another potential coastal storm. And as we go further out in time, this is now October 14th. This trough going from California, from Alaska, and the international date line, the Bering Sea there, all the way down to uh, Oregon and Northern California, normally this would set up a warm pattern for the eastern half of the country. But because we have blocking in the jet stream over eastern Canada and Greenland, the low pressure areas coming in from the Pacific are forced to take a much further southerly track. And they don't go up to the Great Lakes. They don't go up in Canada, but they cut across, let's say, Kansas, Missouri, Kentucky, Virginia, and it's a much wetter and stormier pattern. Uh, if we look at the global hemispheric depictions of this, you can see the blocking here on October 3rd, two big blocks. I've highlighted them very nicely. This is now October 7th. We have three blocking patterns if you look at the northern hemisphere. I mean, if this was winter, this would be gangbusters, boys and girls. Really, it would be. And this is October 11th. Now, this is interesting to see. The extended models here continue to show very strong blocking here. This is now uh, November 8th to November 14th. You can see the strong blocking in the pink color here over the northern hemisphere. And some other data shows, <clears throat> again, this is NASA's, the September 1 model data. These are Look at all these different models here. So on the left-hand side, we have the mean, the European, the British model right here, the CFS, the American climate model, the Japanese model, the French, the Canadian, the German, and then the unified model. And you can see that uh, this is showing uh, well, the strength of the polar vortex. Um, uh, and, when you, and when it's weak and negative, that means you have negative, you have negative NEO or blocking patterns. So what you want to see are numbers which are very close to zero or negative. And look at December. We can see a lot of these models are showing negative. The British model here. The rest of these models are showing very weak polar vortex here and here in December, January. Look at these numbers. Very close to zero. Okay, even into February. And uh, that indicates potentially negative uh, Arctic oscillation features. And the correlation of that is pretty strong. The September models usually show a pretty good tendency in December, January, uh, depicting the right sign, the right signatures of the Arctic oscillation as we go into the winter. That's what it's showing. Um, let me make sure I got this one right. So <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to point out was... Um, you know, we are seeing more signs of it on the different global models of strong blocking showing up in here. So we don't know if that's going to happen, but I believe it is going to be the case. 